Well, okay. Shalom, shalom to everyone out there. Shalom, first and foremost. Let's start this off by giving all honor, thanks, praise, and glory to our Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, which is the Most High, and His Son Christ. Secondly, much love, support, and salutations to all of the sincere brothers and sisters out there who spread in this biblical truth with all faith, endurance, knowledge, and sincerity to all of our people out there with eyes to see, ears to hear, and a mind to understand once again. This is your brother Yahweh Yashara from the Sea Souls of Israel, the Rocks of Offense, and also the Ambassadors for Righteousness, the Restorers of Paths and the Repairers of the Breach, and the Advocates for Christ. Once again, dropping you another video. So, brothers and sisters, what this video is going to be about is the three major festivals, which is the fall festivals or autumn festivals, if you want to call it that, right? And which I've been doing over the last past few weeks, right? And also, this is going to be part two to a video that I've done a few years ago, which is called Forgive, right? So, as you know, we're coming up on the so-called Yom Kippur, which is the Day of Atonement, right? So this evening right here is Friday evening. So this is the original seventh day Shabbat, right? So as you can see here, behind me is the evening tide, right? It's the sunset. Such a lovely, lovely view. Can't you agree? <laughs> right? So, you know, we're now in the evening tide for the seventh day Shabbat. And then right behind that, which is from Saturday evening to Sunday evening, it's going to be the Yom Kippur, which is the Day of Atonement. You know, when we send up our supplications to the Most High and ask the Most High for forgiveness for our sins, right? And all other iniquity that we may have committed throughout the year. So I thought to myself, you know, why not put this video together for tonight? You know, before the Shabbat, the seventh day Shabbat and the Atonement right which is called forgive okay part two to that so the reason why i decided to do that is because you know this is something that we have to do as a nation of people man you know us so-called negroes hispanics native americans and seminal indians of negro descent which is also known as the 12 tribes of israel ran right this is something that we have to do man we have to work on as a nation of people right this is something that's very very hard for us difficult for us to do because we just don't have that love for one another no more, man. We don't have that respect and gratitude for one another anymore, man. Right? We don't have that 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 common courteousness for each other, that patience for one another. Okay? And this is something that's been taught to our people for over generations and generations, man. Just been passed down and passed down on how to disrespect one another, how to hate one another, how not to be considerate towards one another, man. Right? So... If you deem yourself a true follower of Christ like most churchgoers do, right? And a believer of the Bible and most importantly, a believer of the Most High. Well, this weekend right here is the Day of Atonement weekend, man, the Yom Kippur. When you're supposed to be asking the Most High for your forgiveness, for your sins, okay? For your trespasses, for all of the hate that you have built up in your heart, man. All of the animosity, okay? All of the grudging that you have in your heart, man. So this is something that you're supposed to be doing, which is asking the Most High forgiveness for that. Okay, so, you know, this is something that we sincerely need to work on, man. You know, especially if it's something petty, you know what I'm saying? If it's something that's easily forgivable, if it's been done years and years ago and it could be easily settled, you know, sometimes, you know, you have to be the bigger person in this situation, man. And which I know is very difficult for our people to do, right? But... You know, how can you ask the Most High to forgive you for all of your grudges and your sins that you hold against someone else, okay? And then you yourself is unwilling to forgive others, man, right? So this is something that our people need to do. And how to do that is coming back to keeping the law, statutes, the commandments of the Most High. It teaches you how to love again, man, how to have love in your heart again for your people, how to have patience and consideration, hospitality, for your people again, man, which is simply following the law, statutes, the commandments of the Most High, you know, let alone the Big Ten, all right? So this is something that our people need to work on sincerely, man, and this is the perfect weekend to do it, 
which is a double Shabbat once again. You know, you can't be working, you know, any several hour work. And then for your Day of Atonement, which is the Yom Kippur from Saturday evening to Sunday evening, you can't do any work whatsoever because you got to atone for your sins and you got to afflict your body. But you still have to give your offerings up to the Most High. Okay? So I'm going to get right into it, man. And the first one that I'm going to go to is in the chapter 13. All right. Okay, so here we go in the book of Acts, chapter 13, as you can see here on the screen. And we're going to jump down to verse 33. And it read, And the Most High Power hath fulfilled the same unto us, their children, and that he hath raised up Hamashiach again. As it is also written in the second psalm, Thou art my son, this day I have begotten thee. Okay, so this is letting you know here that Hamashiach, in which the world calls Christ, okay, he is the begotten son of the Most High Power. But all throughout the scripture, you know, it states if you're keeping the law, statutes, the commandments of the Most High, you know, if you of the hopeful one third elect, you know, if you have repented and turned away from your sins then you are also the son of the most high right verse 34 and as concerning that he raised him up from the dead which is the spiritually dead right now no more to return to corruption okay which is your corrupted flesh okay your flesh itself is sin all right. He said on this wise, I will give you the sure mercies of David. OK, so the same mercy that the Most High gave to David or King David, as some some people call him, he gave the same mercies to Hamashiach. All right. He gave Hamashiach the throne of David, as a matter of fact. Right. Verse 35. Wherefore, he saith also in another psalm, Thou shalt not suffer thy holy one to see corruption. Verse 36. For David, after he had served his own generation by the what? The will of the Most High Power. Okay, what's the will of the Most High Power? That's keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments, right? Fell on sleep. Okay, meaning that, you know, he gave up the ghosts, right? He made his transition and was laid to his fathers and saw corruption. Verse 37. But he whom the Most High Power raised again saw no corruption. Verse 38. But it be known, or Salak, it be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. Okay, so the Most High, you know, when he was sent here to do the will of the Most High, which is reinstilling the law, statutes, commandments back into a sinful nation, which was the children of Israel, you know, he was preaching on to us the forgiveness of sins, you know, just like all of the other prophets was doing, right? Verse 39, and by him. All that believe are justified from all things from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. Okay, because during that time, our people, we were in oppression and captivity from the Romans, man. So a lot of our people in the land during that time, you know, they wasn't keeping all of the laws, statutes, the commandments 100 percent. And then you had the wicked Pharisees and the scribes and the Sadducees, you know. They was taking bribes from the people, 
you know, they was, you know, accepting their sin. Okay, they was accepting gifts from the people for forgiveness as if they was the most high, right? But through Hamashiach, you know, through faith, you know, he was preaching the forgiveness of sins. Okay. Verse 40. Beware, therefore, lest that come upon you, which is spoken of in the prophets. Verse 41. Behold, ye despisers and wonder and perish. For I work a work in your days, a work which ye shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. Okay, so this is what's going on with the sinners today. You know, as we, you know, through these video epistles that I'm doing right now, or, you know, any other brother and sister that's like-minded in this faith, you know, a lot of our people don't believe what we tell them in these video epistles or face-to-face -face, or however you're doing it through a flyer or on social media or whatever. A lot of our people just don't believe that the prophecies are now coming to pass. You know, a lot of the plagues are now hitting this place, man. But all of our people just want to do is just ignore us and just have fun and go out, go to clubs, get drunk, you know, smoke one, pop one. You know what I'm saying? This is all our people want to do, man. They want to remain in their sin. They don't want to keep the dietary law. They want to keep on defiling and breaking the Sabbath. They don't want to keep none of the high holy days. Like, as a matter of fact, a lot of our people are not even thinking about the Day of Atonement this weekend. They're not even thinking about the Sabbath tonight. Okay, so this is what our people care about, man. All they want to do is just remain in their sins and just party all the time, right? So this is the reason why they don't believe a damn thing that we speak in, man, okay? But this is what it says right here in verse 41. Behold, ye despise us, what? Ye despise us of the Most High's laws, statutes, and commandments, man. Ye despise us of the Most High truth tellers, man, right? And wonder and perish. For I work a work in your days, a work which ye in no wise believe. Okay, what's that work? The so-called karagma, okay? The MOTB, the mark of the beast, right? The one that's in your forehead, so-called forehead, and in your hand, which is the works of Satan in your mind, and then the thoughts of Satan, okay, in your mind and also in your hand, all right? Whatever you do, whatever you put your hand to, which is the so-called plow, your work, it's works of Satan. Okay, whatever you thinking in your mind, right, it's thoughts of Satanism. All right, anything that's not of the Most High, that's not of keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, okay, which is defiling all of the high holy days, okay, keeping the vain customs and rudiments of the world, man. All right, that's the works of Satan, okay. A work which ye shall in no wise believe, though a man, which is us, declare it unto you. Right? Let's go to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 12. Okay, we're going to jump down to verse 8, and it read, And in the morning came the word of the Most High unto me, saying, verse 9, Son of man, hath not the house of Israel the rebellious house? Okay, so this is what our people are, man. We are a rebellious people. Just like I said, we don't give a damn about keeping laws, statutes, and commandments to the Most High. You know, let alone the high holy days and the solemn feast days, right? The rebellious house say unto thee, what doest thou? Verse 10. Say thou unto them, thus saith the most high power, this burden concerneth the prince in Jerusalem and all the house of Israel that are among them. Okay, so that's basically the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom which is jerusalem which is the southern kingdom and the house of israel which is the northern kingdom right 
and then of course the prince is the men of Israel right verse 11 say I am your sign like as I have done so shall it be done unto them they shall remove and go into captivity okay so we are your sign all right we are the sign to our people man letting our people know to repent come back to their power which is the most high the god of the bible the god of israel to keep the laws statutes and commandments in the high holy days and the solemn feast days man right keep the shabbat day holy which is this evening all right don't forget about the day of atonement which is the yom kippur which is right after that all right so this is your sign man right a lot of our people want to look up into the sky they want to see some spectacular event taking place in the sky or whatever or you know some some special effects or whatever which may be project blue being by the way <laughs> or cgi right being reflected in the sky by the way right but this is what our people want to see they want to see some great magnificent sign some mesmerizing sign in the air from the most high himself and the most high ain't going to do anything right he's going to shoo his prophecy onto the prophets man and who's the prophets us according to the scripture you know the spirit is subjugated to the prophets as the scripture have it so we are your sign okay verse 11 say i am your sign like as i have done so shall it be done unto them they shall remove and go into captivity verse 12 and the prince that is among them shall bear upon his shoulder in the twilight and shall go forth they shall dig through the wall to carry out thereby he shall cover his face that he see not the ground with his eyes verse 13 my net also i will spread upon them and he shall be taken in my snare okay not the enemy snare the most high snare that he's going to work through your enemy to bring you into captivity right and i will bring him to babylon to the land of the chaldeans yet shall he not see it though he shall die there all right so this is what the most high does to us man when we go into sin into breaking his laws statutes, the commandments and we forget about him he sent a vicious nation to our people to put us into captivity just as we are today which is behind enemy lines man right verse 14 and i will scatter towards every wind all that are about to help him all right and all his bands and i will draw out a sword after him all right so this is what's going on today man this is the reason why a lot of people that try to rescue us from out of our condition within our nation of people they all was destroyed man who they was destroyed by they was destroyed by the most high because it says right here in verse 14 the most high drew out a sword after them okay the sword is a symbol for destruction it's a metaphor an allegory for destruction man right so you have all of these uh saviors that try to save us out of our condition right in which they were good in their own time but they wasn't teaching our people to come back to keep the law statutes, the commandments of the most high right they wasn't telling us who we are as a nation of people according to truth okay so you have people like marcus garvey malcolm x you had malcolm king in which the world knows as martin luther king okay you got minister lewis farrakhan okay and you have all of these other people man geronimo pratt for the the black panther party okay you had khalid muhammad all right you had a whole lot of great people within our nation of people that tried to be our savior but they wasn't teaching our people who they were which was the truth man letting us know that we were the children of israel man the so-called negroes hispanics native americans and seminole indians of negro descent man right verse 14 again from the top and i will scatter towards every wind all that are about him to help him and all his bands and i will draw out a sword after them okay verse 15 and they shall know that i am the most high when i shall scatter them among the nations and disperse them in the countries okay which we are now we are all over the place man 
right? We're in Europe. We're in Asia, Western Asia and Eastern Asia, right? We're in Australia. We're all over Africa, okay? We're over here in the Americas, South America, the Caribbean, Central America, the States, Canada. We're all over the place, man. There's Israelites all over the place right now, man, right? Verse 16, but I will leave a few men of them from the sword, from the famine, and from the pestilence, that they may declare all their abominations among the heathen, whether they come, and they shall know that I am the most high power, man. All right, so this is what the most high is doing with us, man. Right, just as it states in the scripture here, in verse 16, the Most High is going to leave a few men. Who is those few men? That's the remnant of the Most High. Okay, the remnant of the nation of Israel, of the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, the Seminole Indians of Negroid descent, man. The Most High is going to leave a remnant of men that's going to keep his law, statutes, and commandments and spread his truth. Okay, always keep his solemn feast days as we're doing right now. Okay, and try to wake our people up into coming back into their power to keep in the law, snatch the commandments of the Most High if they want to be saved out of the condition that they're in right now, which is oppression, okay? Suppression, last hired, first fired, okay? Last to be looked upon, last to be considered, okay? You have all of the red flags in this society put up in your face, man, stopping you from getting that bank loan, stopping you from getting that house loan, starting you, stopping you from getting that car loan, right? You get looked at with disdain, Okay, you have racism and prejudiceness practiced against you every single day of your life, man. Right? So this is what we're doing. We're trying to remind our people like, hey, you know, we're still in captivity here. Although you see a lot of our people doing good, you know, so to speak, doing good. But a lot of them, they sold out. They copped out to Satan, man. Right? They're doing the bidding of Satan. They're doing the works of Satan. This is the reason why they're being rewarded with gifts. Okay? But it's not blessings. There's difference between receiving gifts and blessings. Okay, when you receive gifts from so-called Hashatan for doing his works, those gifts can be easily taken away. They can be easily destroyed. But when you get a, bless a blessing from the Most High, you know, those things, they can't be destroyed nor taken away. These are something that you're going to keep throughout the rest of your life, man. Right? As long as you can keep it. All right. Or if you decide to sell it or whatever, you know what I'm saying? But blessings from the most high is something that remains for you for the rest of your life, man. Right. So this is what a lot of our people have confused between receiving gifts from the enemy for doing their bidding and receiving blessings from the most high, man. Right. So back to what I was reading here. As it says here. But I will leave a few men of them from the sword okay which is destruction right and from famine which is starvation okay and from the pestilence all right which is the so-called karagma that's going around let alone all of the other diseases that's going around right that they may declare all their abomination among the heathen okay so this is what we're doing on a daily basis man we're declaring all the abomination among the heathen where we are now from our people, man. We're letting our people know that they're defiling the Sabbath. They're defiling the dietary law. Okay, they're not keeping any of the solemn feast days, none of the high holy days, right? They don't even consider who they are as a nation of people, right? Where do they come and they shall know that I am the most high power that's working through us, man. Why? Because we're coming straight from the scriptures, man. Okay? Let's go to the book of St. Luke, chapter 17. All right, so here we go. We're in the book of St. Luke, chapter 17. And we're going to start at verse 1. 
And let me move this up right here a little bit. And it read. Then said he unto the disciples. Who's the he? That's speaking about Hamashiach right here, right? It is impossible, but that offenses will come. But woe, okay, when you look up into the definition of the word woe, that means destruction, right? Chaos. But woe unto him through whom they come. Okay, so the Most High through Hamashiach is letting us know that, you know, offenses is going to come on a daily basis, right? You're going to have your people hating on you. Not only your people, this is basically people in general, right? So you're going to have people hating on you. You're going to have people talking greasy about you, talking down on you, looking at you with disrespect and disdain. Okay, you're going to have people, they're going to be practicing witchcraft on you. Okay, they're going to be attacking your finances through their witchcraft. They're going to be attacking your physical health, your mental health through their witchcraft and their sorceries, right? But this is what Hamashiach says, right? But woe unto him or her through whom they come. All right, so if you're keeping the law, statutes, the commandment to the Most High, and you're serving Him, okay, you're doing what's pleasing to Him according to Scripture, then destruction is going to come to those people who's practicing these wicked acts towards you, right? Verse 2 It were better for Him or her that a millstone were hanged about their neck, right? As it says, His neck here, right? But this is talking about men and women, right? And he or she cast into the sea, then that he or she should offend one of these little ones, okay? Who's the little ones? That's us. The ones who came back to the Most High. The ones who are repentant, as the world called it, right? Who's keeping the law, statutes, the commandments. You know, as it's written in Scripture, you know, when you come to serve the Most High, you got to come as a little child, okay? You got to come as someone who's humbled. All right, someone who's willing to learn as children does, right? Verse 3. Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. Okay, so this is Hamashiach letting us know. All right, hey, if you have someone that's going to trespass against you, you got to rebuke them. All right, just don't let them get away with it. Let them know, hey, if you stepping on my feet, let them know, yo, you stepping on my feet, okay? Or if you insulting me or if you trespassing to me, okay, if you're disrespecting me, then I got to let you know that. I got to let you have it, right? But if you repent, then this is what we got to do. We got to forgive you, all right? So this is the reason why I'm doing this video here, all right? So you got a lot of people, you know, that's in churchanity, so to speak, right they like to make it seem like christ is this soft person right you know christ is all about love right no matter what someone do to you you know no matter if they disrespect you no matter if they step on your shoe so to speak no matter if they talk greasy about you talk down on you look at you with disdain and disrespect right they don't care for you. They don't have no hospitality towards you, right? A lot of these so-called Christians, they like to say that Christ just tells you to just ignore them and turn the other cheek. Yes, that's written in scripture, but they have the wrong interpretation of it, right? It doesn't mean like literally turn your cheek and let someone else hit the other cheek, right? You know, this right here, Christ is telling you to rebuke that person who's trespassing against you, okay? Just don't let someone run over you and disrespect you, all right? You got to be Christ-like. You got to be austere. You got to be firm, okay? So if someone's going to disrespect you, this is what you have to do. You have to rebuke them, right? And this is how Christ was. Now, in so-called religious churchianity and Roman Catholicism, just like I said, they want you to believe like Christ is this person who was always lovey-dovey and soft all the time. As a matter of fact, I got to do a video on that too, man, right? They want you to believe that Christ is this soft individual, always going around loving people all the time, right? People messing up all over the place. They screwing up all over the place. They break the laws of the most high. They committing sin and iniquity all over the place. And Christ just walking around like he's in some 
fantasy world, some La La Land or whatever, talking about, oh, just love and forgive, just love and forgive, right? That was in Christ, man. I don't know what scripture you are reading. I don't know what kind of Bible you so-called Christians are reading, man, but that's not how Christ was. Christ was a firm, austere man, man, right? He put down the law, all right? This is the reason why he was sent into the world, right, to instill keeping the law, statute, commandments back into our people, man, which was a sinful rebellious people man right so christ was all about business man he was serious okay this is the reason why he tells us to rebuke those who trespass you man right here in the book of luke man right it's a matter of fact let's get into the definition of what rebuke is you know for those who may not understand fully and wholeheartedly what rebuke means right See, this is the reason why we have to know definitions of words, man. Right? So we could fully understand what we're reading here. Rebuke. All right. So as it says here, for the first definition, which is a verb, right? It says express sharp disapproval. Okay? Disapproval or criticism of someone because of their what? Their behavior or actions. Okay? She had rebuked him for drinking too much, all right? And then right here, you have your similar, which is reprimand, reapproach, scold, admonish, okay? Which is another word that have a broad banding of definitions, right? When it says right here, admonish, warn or reprimand someone firmly, all right? Reapprove, remonstrate with, chastity, all right, or chastise, shide, upbraid, berate, take to task, all right, just as they used to say back in the day, right? Pull up, castigate, lambaste, all right, read someone a riot act, all right? Haul over the coals, criticize, sincere, tell off. Give someone a talking to, all right? Another old school gesture that people used to say back in the day, right? Give someone a telling off, dress down. Give someone a dressing down. Give someone an earful, okay? This doesn't seem like, you know, just going around accepting whatever someone else does to you and just have love, love, love all in your mind, all in your heart, all day long, right? Just Letting people just run all over you and do whatever the hell they want to you, right? But this is what rebuke said. This is what Christ said right here in the book of Luke, right? Chapter 17. Okay. Give someone a rocket. Wrap. Wrap over the knuckles. Okay. What is wrapping over the knuckles? A fist fight, man. Shooting the five. Squabble. Okay. Slap someone's wrist. Let someone have it. Brawl out. Okay. Give someone hell, all right? This is what Christ's telling you to do, man. Give someone hell, all right? Come down on, blow up, pitch into, lay into, okay? Now, all of this right here is from the word rebuke, all right? So, the word rebuke isn't a simple word, man, okay? Give someone a mouthful. Tear someone off a strip, <laughs> right? So I guess y'all get the, the, the hang of it. I mean, I don't need to go into all of this right here. All right, as you can see here on the screen, all right? If you need to, you can pause it or look it up yourself right here on Google, just like I did, man. All right, so this is rebuke. Rebuke. Okay, so whenever you see the word rebuke in scripture, all right, you know exactly what that is right there, man. Okay, so, you know, something like this ain't to be taken lightly, man. Like a lot of the people, you know, especially our people, they read these scriptures and they read over these words and they don't really fully understand the definition of these words, man. All right, so when they hear words like this, they think it's simple. When they hear the word like rebuke or reprimand or whatever or admonish, Okay, they think these are simple words, man, but these words have a broad 
understand the meaning of words, man. All right. So this is the reason why you have to know the definition of these words when you're reading the scripture so you can have the full understanding of what you're reading. OK, so right there is letting you know when Christ tells you to rebuke someone when they trespass against you. Right. You have to let them have it, man. You have to let them know like, yo, you trespassing against me. I ain't having it. You know, this is something that I don't, you know, allow. I don't tolerate. You know what I'm saying? I have my um, my boundaries and you're crossing them. And you, you got to let people know, man, like, yo, you know, this this right here, it, it's not going to fly. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know if this is something that you're used to doing to other people, but it's not going to fly here. You know what I mean? So if you're trespassing against me, then I got to let you know that you're trespassing. And that's the way I'm going to do. This is being Christ like, so to speak. Right. As the so-called church goer go uh, calls it. OK, but they have the wrong conception about Christ. They thought Christ was all about love and just going around and handing out smiles and hugs and and the lollipops and, and all of the goodies all day, man. Right. But Christ is letting you know right here, man, if someone's trespassing against you, you got to rebuke them. Right. But at the same time, just like it says, you know, we also have to forgive if they repent. Right. So this is mainly what this video is about this evening. All right. So as it says here, once again, verse four. And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day. And seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt forgive him. Okay, so this is what this is all about, man. Okay, so you have to forgive as a nation of people, man. Right, just like I said, you know, this is something that, you know, very difficult for our people to do. You know, a lot of our people will hate to be, you know, the bigger person in certain situations and, you know, try to make things better. And, you know, make situations better, you know, for both people, both parties to dwell in. But, you know, this is something that we have to do, man. If we want to call ourselves followers of Christ and believer of the God of the Bible and the scriptures, we have to forgive. Right. But, you know, just as it says here in verse three, we have to give them a good rebuking, so to speak. Right. If they don't repent. All right. Verse five. And the apostles said on to the most high, increase our faith. Right. <laughs> so this is what the apostles are saying, because they like, hey, you know, even though we believe in you, Christ, and, you know, we follow you to the T, you know, we believe in keeping the law, statute, commandment to the most high. You know what I'm saying? And hey, we love you, Christ. You know what I'm saying? You, you know, you are a shepherd. We following you. We left everything behind to follow you. You know, and we want to be just like you, but you got to increase our faith because we dealing with some wicked ass people out here, man. Right. Just as we are today. You know what I'm saying? You have a whole lot of us, you know, who's like minded as myself. We're keeping the law, statutes, commandments. Right. We're trying to keep the high holy days and the solemn feast days and feast. Right. And peace. But, you know, you still have a lot of our people that surround us. You know, you know, they will mock you. They will ridicule you. Right. They will tell you that the laws are done away with why you believing in that fake book. Right. That make believe book. You know, a lot of people talking about they were rather believe in, you know, Dr. Seuss read it in the scriptures, man. Right. But newsflash, you know, Dr. Seuss is written by a man, too. And then on top of that, Dr. Seuss were written by. Holy, right. These scriptures was written by holy men, man, expired by the most high. You know, how do I know that it's written in scripture? OK, so the scriptures is a real authentic book, man. Right. All of these prophecies are coming to pass right before your face, man. And you can't deny it. Right. So we're around a whole bunch of wicked ass people, man. A lot of people are drenched in their sin. They love living in their sin. You know, they love to be drunk. They love to be high. Right. Popping pills and all of that. Defiling the Sabbath. OK. You know, a lot of people like to slander you. Right. A lot of people be hating on you for no reason at all. A lot of people be casting spells and bad omens and witchcraft and sorcery on you for no reason at all. And unfortunately, a lot of this is coming from our own people. Right. So this is what we have to put up with as righteous people, man. OK, so this is the reason why the apostles are, you can say the 12 disciples are asking Christ like you got to increase our faith 
because we dealing with some nonsense here on a daily basis, man. Right. And this is what Christ does for us. And this is what makes us the bigger person. You know, this is the reason why we have the spirit and the power to forgive. OK, because we have the spirit of Christ. Right. We always going to forgive. We always going to have our hand scratched out. That's only if you sincerely, you know, repent. OK, and then we're going to give you forgiveness. Right. Verse six, and the most high power said, if ye had faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye might say unto this sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root and be thou planted in the sea and it shall obey you. OK, so this right here is an allegory or a parable or a metaphor. All right. So the sycamine tree. You know, it's basically an obstacle that you're faced with in your life that you may think that's difficult, you know, through the flesh, but through the spirit is not. OK. And through the power of the most high through Christ, you know, if you're Christ like and you're being firm and candid in a store and keeping the law, statutes and commandments and making righteous judgment, then that sycamine tree is going to be uprooted and planted in a tree. All right. It's going to obey you, meaning that you're going to have power over the demonic spirits, man, that's trying to attack you and come at you. Right. Verse seven. But which of you having a servant plowing or feeding cattle will say unto him by and by when he is come from the field? Go and sit down to meet. Verse eight. And will rather not say unto him, make ready wherewith I may sup and gird myself and serve me till I have eaten and drunken and afterward thou shalt eat and drink. Verse nine. Doth he think that servant because he did the things that were commanded of him? I throw not. OK, so basically this is what we're supposed to be doing as servants of the most high. Right. And basically, this is what I'm doing right now. You know, this is my service to the Most High, to our people, to awaken our people, to let them know to come back to serving the Most High, to keeping his high holy days, keeping his solemn feast days, his laws, statutes, and commandments, right? Salakia. So this is my reasonable service to the Most High, right? And this is something that we all supposed to be doing. You know, if, you know, we consider ourselves the hope for one third elect, the ones who's looking to make Shamayim, which is eternal rest. Right. So this is something that we have to do, man. And, you know, we shouldn't pat ourselves on the back. You know, this because we made a video or pistol or, you know, just because we gave out a few flyers or whatever, or just because, you know, we let someone know that we're Israelites. You know what I'm saying? This is something that we must constantly do on an everyday basis if we can, man. Right. We always must be occupied in the work, as the scripture says. it. OK, so if the most high commands us to keep his law, statutes, commandments and his solemn feast days and his high holy days, we can't pat ourselves just because we kept one Sabbath. We can't pat ourselves on the back just because we kept one Pesach, which is the Passover and unleavened bread. This because we skipped one week of not eating pork or catfish or whatever. You know, this is something that we're supposed to be doing for the rest of our lives, man. This is a covenant that our forefathers made with the Most High in the wilderness after coming out of the first exodus. So we can't pat ourselves on the back for something that we're supposed to be doing anyway, right? So this is the reason why Christ said that. Okay. Verse 9 again from the top. Doth he think that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I trow not. Verse 10. So likewise, ye, okay, you so-called Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, the Seminole Indians of Negro descent. When ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say we are of profitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. OK, so this is what you got to tell yourself, man. All right. Just like with me. You know, sometime when I'm making these uh, video of pistols here or, 
I'm giving out my flyers or whatever, or I'm having some conversations with some brothers and sisters concerning scripture, concerning, you know, the keeping of the law, statutes, the commandments, and the high holy days, or, you know, which day does the real Sabbath fall, which day does the new moon falls on or whatever. This is our reasonable service. You know, this is a building of the nation, right? So even after all of that, it could be all night I'm going on with this, right? I could make a three our video a pistol okay but after all of that i can't pat myself on the back and be like yo okay well i did a two hour three hour video a pistol i'm good for the rest of the year or i'm good for the rest of the month right i gotta have my mind set on doing the next video man informing our people on repentance on returning back to the most high on letting them know that we're living in the last days right we have the prophecies being fulfilled right before our faces man right you see the pestilence going around you see the famines going around the the sword of destruction okay people starving out here man right people could barely pay their rent all right a lot of people is getting evicted now right and although it's not being shown on a nightly news but if you go on youtube or google what have you or any other you know website you know that um that shows you all of the things that's going on in the world, right? CNN or MSNBC, whatever, ABC, CBS, whatever, right? They're going to show you people literally getting put out on the streets, man. Their furniture is like literally on the curve, man, right? People going to the supermarkets, they can't even walk out of the supermarket with a shark, a, a carpet shop full of food, right? Because people is not making enough money. It seems like everything is going up except the pay rate. All right. So this is the famine that's going around. Right. You see the so-called uh, GMO being produced. Right. You have the laboratory grown meat being produced. Right. You have the uh, the mingled and mixed salmon with all of the unclean uh, species of salmon that's that's being sold to us. Right. Unknowingly and ignorantly. Right. A lot of our people don't know about this stuff here, man, because why? All they want to do is just party and B-U-S, <laughs> you know, just like Biggie said, right? Trying to keep it PG-13, right? So this is all our people care about. Or they just natural haters. They natural reprobates, right? They don't believe in the scripture. You know, they're agnostic atheists, right? They're ready to follow Kemet. They were ready to follow African spirituality. They're ready to follow Hinduism, Buddhism, Taoism, okay? They rather be into witchcraft. Right. A lot of our people are into some wickedness, man. So this is the reason why the prophecies are being fulfilled in the earth today. OK, so this is what's going on. Man. And a lot of our people are being caught by storm of this right here. And they're dumbfounded and they confound it and they don't know what to do. OK, this karagma hitting people, right, being forced on people. A lot of our people don't even know what it is, man. That's part of the MOTB. OK. That's being put in your hand, so to speak. When you go into the definition of, or the deeper definition, slakia, of what something is when it's put in your hand, you know what I'm saying? That could be your arm. It could be your forearm. It could be your shoulder, right? It doesn't necessarily have to be your hand, man. Okay, so that karagma is being forced on the people. And just as the scripture says in the book of Revelation, if you don't have it, then you can't buy or sell. What does it mean if you can't buy or sell? You're not going to be able to work. If you're not going to be able to work, then you're not going to be able to buy anything, okay? If you have your own business, it's not going to be lucrative as you think or you would like it to be. Why? Because you don't have that MOTB, which is in your mind, the acceptance of the false doctrine of today's society, today's satanic society, so to speak. Okay, so that's what the mark is, man, which is in your forehead or what is in your hand okay also it could be known as the works of your hand as i was saying before you know whatever you put your hand to the plow the plow is your work okay if you're doing the work in the bidding of satan if you're deceiving your people you're telling people that the bible is fake okay you're telling people that the law statute of commandments are done away with you're leading your people into worshiping false gods following false ideologies, false philosophies, false dogmas, okay, believing in their selves as God, okay, in which we are, but we're not the most high God, okay, we can't save ourselves out of this present day captivity that we're in, in oppression, 
All right. So when you're leading your people astray and you're doing the works of Satan with your hand. OK, that's basically you have the mark of the, the beast, man. You have the MOTB, which is through your hand. You're doing the works of Satan. OK, so this is what this is, man. Like some people, they like to say that, you know, the MOTB is this little chip that they instill in your hand right here. Right now, don't get me wrong. You know, I believe that's a part of the MOTB, but it's not the MOTB. OK, the MOTB starts up here, man. This, as it says in the book of um, Ezekiel and in the book of Deuteronomy. Right. You have to have the mark of the most high between your eyes, man, in your foreheads. All right. Which is the doctrine, the wisdom, knowledge and understanding of the scriptures, man. OK, that's the mark of the most high in your forehead. OK, now the mark of the most high in our hand is putting our hands to the plow, which is what I'm doing right now. I'm doing the work of the most high by informing our people to come back to keeping the law, statutes, the commandments of the Most High, keeping the high holy days, keeping the solemn feasts, okay? This is the mark in my hand, so to speak, doing the work, okay? You do work with your hands, all right? So that's what the mark is all about, man, right? But of course, you know, you have people, they have different perceptions of it, right? Verse 10 again from the top. So likewise, ye, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded, you say we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. All right. Let's go to chapter six. Still in the book of St. Mark. Slakia, St. Luke. I'm just going to press this right quick. Okay, here we go. We're in chapter 6. Still in the book of St. Luke. And I'm going to jump down to verse 31. And it read, And as ye would... That men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. Okay? So, this is Christ right here, man. Okay? He's letting you know that if someone is doing something to you, or if you would like someone to behave a certain way or in a certain manner towards you, then you got to be that way with them, right? As it says right here. And as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. Okay, so if you want someone to treat you with respect, then you have to give respect. Okay, if you want someone to treat you with love, then you got to give love. All right. And this was going on with our people today, man. See, just like I was saying before, a lot of our people, they just don't know how to show that love to one another anymore, man. A lot of our people been trained to hate people. A lot of our people been programmed to hate each other for so long, man. Right. If it's not coming out of their own households, it's coming from the television. Right. It's coming from these wicked movies that's being produced, man. And Holly weird. Right. It's programming our people mentally and spiritually to hate each other, man. It's through the music nowadays. Right. You can't even turn on the radio nowadays and listen to a good song anymore. You know, everything is about breaking the laws of the most high. It's about adultery. Right. It's about fornication. It's about murder. Right. It's about covetousness. OK. It's about believing in other gods. OK. Right. It's about exalting a wicked lifestyle, so to speak. Right. So our people are being programmed to be this way. And it's like a lot of them don't even realize it. A lot of them take joy in that, right? This is the reason why we are the way we are towards one another, right? And mainly because we don't know the scripture. We don't know who we are, okay? We don't know that the laws, statutes, and commandments are here to stay, man. And it's still in effect today, okay? Because a lot of this stuff isn't being promoted by our people. The so-called higher up in our society, man, the celebrities, 
which is supposed to be the public spokespersons for our people, man. They're not teaching our people this. So this is where we come in at, right? The hope for one third elect, the ones who's actually keeping the law, statutes, and commandments to the most high, the ones who believe in, in the most high, all right? And believing in Hamashiach and following Christ and being Christ-like, which is a stir, okay? Being firm, candid, and laying these laws down, man, right? And, and informing our people to come back to keeping these laws, okay? So this is what this is, man. If you want respect, then you have to give respect. If you want love, you have to give love, okay? If you want someone to talk good about you, then you have to talk good about people, okay? If you don't want someone to slander you, then stop slandering people, okay? You have to treat people the way that you would love to be treated, okay? You can't go around being a wicked-ass Negro all your life, slandering people, okay? Talking greasy about people behind their back and just being an all-around hater, right? But you expect people to show you love, okay? You expect people to respect you, okay? You expect people to salute you every time they see you. But you don't do the same thing, right? So, just like Christ said, if you want someone to treat you with all of this kindness and this love and respect, then you have to do the same thing, man, right? Plain and simple as that. And that's pretty much cut straight and dry, right? Verse 32. For if ye love them which love you, what think have ye? For sinners also love those that love them. All right. So Christ is letting you know. So if you only love the people that love you, or if you only show in love to the people that show you love, then what thing does you have? Right. You got to show love to people that you don't know. All right. Who you feel that's deserving of it. OK. You got to respect people who you don't know. All right. This is where you get the sincere thanks. Right. Not only from them, but from the most high himself, because he see your good works. Right. Verse 33. And if ye do good to them, which do good to you, what think have ye for sinners also even the same. Right. So Christ is letting you know, even the sinners do this right here. Right. So if you want to do a good favor to someone who, you know, that's going to pay you back then what thank do you have? You're not going to get no thanks from the Most High. You're not going to get no blessings from the Most High because you already done made up in your mind, hey, this person is going to pay me back for whatever I'm doing for them. So it's all good. But you got to do good things to people who you know that may not be able to pay you back, right? Or do that favor to you that you've done for them. Okay, this is where you get the blessings and the thanks from the Most High, man. Right? Verse 34. And if ye lend to them of whom ye hope to receive, which you already know that's going to pay you back, right? What think have ye? For the sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again, right? So Christ is letting you know that the sinners do all of these things, man. And that's exactly who you are. You a sinner. Okay, so if you're only going to do a favor for someone that you know that's going to repay you, if you're going to lend to someone that you know that's going to pay you back, all right, if you're going to treat someone with respect, love, and kindness that you know that's going to do the same thing back to you or that you already knew for your whole entire life, okay, so Christ is like, what think are you going to have, okay? What think are you going to have if you're going to be antisocial, okay? You want to be standoffish. You don't want to show no love to people, okay? You want to live in your, your, your little box, okay? Uh, uh, having that no new friends mentality, right? That Drake put out, right? You can't live like that in this world, man, right? You can't be a follower, all right? This is what followers do, man, right? This like this like I put out that song, then you got a whole lot of people going around sounding foolish talking about no new friends, right? That's foolish, man. Like you're a grown ass man following somebody, man. Right. If that's what that man want to do, if he don't want to have no new friends, then so be it. Let him live that way. Although he shouldn't live that way. Right. But you're a grown man, man. Right. You have a mind of your own. OK. If you want to get out there and meet new people. Right. You want to meet new friends or whatever. And who knows that person that you meet, it can be the best friend that you ever had in your life, man. Right. 
but you want to live in your little box and say, oh, okay, well, you know, I don't want to meet no new people. I want to be standoffish. I want to be antisocial, right? You don't want to show no love, but you expect for people to show you all kinds of love and all kinds of respect and dignity and, and, and hospitality when you're out on the street, but you ain't doing the same, right? So this is what Christ is letting us know, man, right? If you desire to have a friend, if you desire to have these things done onto you that you love and enjoy, then you got to be the same way, right? If you don't want nobody lying and slandering on you, right? You don't want nobody casting bad omens on you, casting witchcraft, spells, and all of that, then don't do it to them, okay? If you don't want nobody hating on you in front of your face and behind your back, then don't do it to the next man, all right? You got to do onto others as others, as you would like others to do onto you, man, right? So this is what Christ is explaining here, man. Verse 34 again for the top. And if ye lend to them of whom ye hope to receive, what think have ye? For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much gain, man. Right? Let's go to chapter 11, still in the book of St. Luke. 